is the first episode which Coach Bree, your very own, or Coach Breezy, whatever you prefer. Um, I haven't really came up with a name for the conversation, but I know I've been, you know, holding off on this and talking about it for a long time. And I just wanted to give the people what they've been asking for, right? Um, so I want to start off with my mission statement and before I get into the introduction. So the mission here is to facilitate between and bridge the gap between coaches, players, players, coaches, trainers, etc. And I think it's important because, you know, a lot of coaches go into the game and it's just about coaching. It's just about winning. A lot of players go into the game and, you know, they're just a player. They don't know how to talk to a coach. They don't know the emotions that they should be going through or how to facilitate their emotions when they're going through certain things as a player. Trainers, trainers, you know, they think like my job is to just to make your skill level get better and not understand that it's more than just the skill level. It's more about the game. It's more about um, the building the IQ and being a mentor, right? Which is my last thing is being a mentor. So during this podcast, right, these conversations, I want to be able to be a mentor, have conversations that nobody's ever had with me, have conversations that I've had with players and just be able to bridge the gap, right? So Going into, you know, my story, I play basketball my whole life. Um, I chose, I played every sport, you know, and I really stuck with basketball because basketball was my biggest challenge. I played volleyball, softball. What's another sport? Volleyball, softball, track. I was killing, right? Number one, number one, number one MVP type, type of deal for me. But basketball, like my first year playing basketball, I wasn't as effective as I was in the other sports. So it took, and I say, when I say that, I say that offensively. So it took like probably towards the end of my, the end of my first year when I first scored my basket, my first bucket. And I'm a competitor. So to me, like, I I think that's really why the, the reason why I chose um, basketball over all the other sports, because even when I got to high school, like they was begging me to do, do the high jump because I'm an athlete. And if you know me, like I was a jumper, I, I jump out the gym. So I chose basketball. So going into high school, I came from Rialto, right, which people will consider the hood or the ghetto. And from Rialto, I went to Etiwanda. And even a lot of people in my old neighborhood were like, you want to Etiwanda? You know, it's a, it's a, a, a big cultural difference, right? So they say, so when I went to Etiwanda, I mean, it was very diverse. So what they were saying that it wasn't going to be, it, it wasn't that, right? It was a very diverse school, uh, which was cool. So my first day on campus, you know, I got six period PE. Anybody who, I don't know if it's the same now, but when I play, if you get six period PE, it's like you're on the team. So everybody was confused on how I got six period PE and they never seen me before, right? My teammate, I had a teammate, her name is Lanika Boyd. She was a Ended up being an All-American candidate. And me and her had grew up playing together for many years. Me and her were neck and neck. Like, we was the best players on. We was the top two players on every team that we played um, on. So she was at the school. She made varsity freshman year. So when I'm on campus and they're asking me, like, oh, okay. Like, you like these are the, girl, like, the girls on the team. They was like, oh, you got. I'm like, you know, confident. Like, I'm going to be on the team. And they're like, oh, okay. Like, I wasn't going to be on the team. So, you know, like the coaches didn't know me, whatever. So freshman year, I had to fight on the freshman team. I mean, I was cooking. I was cooking. It was a, it was easy. It was like cone drills, right? But it was more competitive. What I will say is that being on freshman, when I play in the freshman teams that I see now, it was way more competitive back then. Skill level, we'll get into skill levels. I don't want to say like the skill level was better, but for all levels, the skill level was matching like the intensity was matching the competitiveness was matching nowadays you get on the freshman team and if if you're supposed to be on varsity and you go on the freshman team you know it's it is what it is so freshman year fr- fr- freshman team it was no frosh freshman because i mean when we talk about 50 60 players in the gym like everybody in the school wanted to play basketball so when we had tryouts everybody was coming and it was like some people why are you even here um respectfully so freshman team frosh sophomore year our freshman year fr- fresh freshman team 
sophomore year, JV, killing on JV. They would ask me as a freshman to step in and play some JV games. I'd be killing. Um, and then junior year, senior year, varsity. So my biggest issue when I played was that out of the team that we had, which I don't know how many girls were on the team, but we had four daughters on the team. So the head coach had one do- one daughter. The assistant coach, which was very good friends with the head coach, had two daughters on the team. And then we had another coach with one daughter on the team, right? So yep, that's four kids. So, and I had parents that they worked, so they couldn't come to every game, and they didn't complain, right? Whereas other parents got an advantage because sometimes they would complain, and the coach would be like, okay, I'm going to play this kid. But one thing about me, I don't care about starting, right? I care about finishing. So even now when I play in leagues and, you know, as I got older, I didn't like to start. When I got to college and coaches were starting me, I didn't like to start. I like to go off the bench because I'm uh, like a chess player. I want you to go first so I can see how you're going to play, right? So that's what I would do coming off the bench. So I didn't mind not starting. My thing with the four girls on the team is that, or four daughters on the team, is that the daughters weren't, the daughters weren't good. I'm going to be honest with you. The daughters weren't that great. The one daughter... The coaches, the head coach's daughter, she could shoot, so I'll give her that. Defensively, no. The other daughter just wasn't good, respectfully. To me, not saying that she wasn't a threat on the for the team, but she wasn't good enough to be playing the minutes that she was playing. And so that's what I struggled with in high school. You know, I struggled with parents saying, Oh, you should be playing. I I struggled with teammates saying, You should be starting or you should be getting more minutes or whatever, you know. And I was getting good minutes. I'm not going to sit here and act like, you know, it's people at the end of the bench that was getting no minutes. I was coming six men off, you know, the the first person off the bench, you know, changing the, the whole energy of the team. That was my unit. So when players get caught up in starting, it kind of bothers me because it's like you don't realize when you come off the bench that that's your unit. It's your time to make an impact on the game. Right. And the best five don't always start. You have to know as a coach that sometimes the five that start are the five that start because the person off the bench is, you need somebody to come off the bench and score. You need somebody to come off the bench to change the energy. You see, you need somebody to come off the bench and defend. You need somebody to come off the bench and lead. So it's not always about that, right? My problem, however, was that my coach, it was just simply favoritism. You can just tell when it's just simply favoritism. And that's just what it was. It was games that I remember to this day. You know, my junior year, we played Long Beach Poly. Long Beach Poly was the team back then, right? Long Beach Poly was them girls. You know, they had five, whole starting five, Division One. Some people off the bench, maybe Division One, Division Two. Everybody, getting, almost everybody on that team is getting a scholarship for sure. Though. So we play in Long Beach Poly, and these girls are serious. When we talk about Long Beach Poly, they in the day before the game, they in the in the weight room. Hitting the gyms, hitting the weights, talking about, you know, we played at A.B. Miller. And, you know, I had a lot of friends at A.B. Miller. So they like, y'all, they was in the weight room before before y'all got here. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. Like, for me, it's like, oh, okay, because I'm a competitor. So I remember that game distinctively because my friend, Kelly Thompson, UNLV elite, right? She was, I'm in, I'm in the game blocking. I'm a hustle player. That's another thing I have to say about me. I've had many injuries, and I'll tell you, we'll talk about injuries that's, that's at a later point. But I have I've had many in, injuries because I just go hard. I don't know anything else but to go hard. That's it. And great things come because I go hard. So you know that game. I remember diving on the floor for balls, um, taking charges. You know, locking up that game. I'm the type of player that I'm gonna give my team what my team needs. All right, so t- sometimes my team is going to need for me to score. Other times my team is going to need for me to defend. Other times, or all the time for me, my team is going to need for me to rebound. So, Kelly, I'm locking up. We That's like the first time we've watched film. I mean, that might be, 
we probably only maybe watched film two times. That's all. And I just want to I'm just say these things because you have to know how bad of a coach I had. Right? Great team, bad coach. I used to have to almost beg to 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 condition. Because what I realized, I'm a basketball like what I realize now is that I've had a high level IQ even when I was younger and it was nothing it just it was natural, right? But we were under condition. We can go play Long Beach Poly. They come out, they lifting weights, but we haven't conditioned besides at the beginning of the season. We don't run lines, none of that. Maybe free throws at the end of, at the end of practice, and we're going back down the backs, right? So Kelly, I'm locking up. She's no nope, zero points, right? I'm in her, right? We've already done the scouting report. I I know her, right? I already know how she plays. So I'm locked in like a chess match. He t- ends up taking me out. I think, I don't know if he t- put his daughter in or the other daughter. One of the daughters went in the game. And when I say when they went in the game, she torched them. She went off for about four back to back to back to back threes. And I'm just on the bench flabbergasted. Because your daughter is not, like, I'm a coach now. So because I'm a coach now, I'm I'm judging him equally, right? As a player, what you guys don't realize as a player is that you guys judge your coaches and you guys have no idea what your coaches are looking for. And you guys just are biased because you guys want to be in the game. As a coach, I look back at those games and I say, he was just a bad coach. You took out the player that was locking up a primary player on that team to put in a kid who didn't contribute offensively or defensively and was getting torched defensively. To this day, it makes no sense to me. We end up losing that game. I don't even remember. We might have lost by like 13 points. Kelly probably had 17. That was my junior year. I was not happy about that. My senior year, I thought about transferring to A.B. Miller. We were supposed to end up getting Chloe Chloe and Lola Wells. One went to Duke, I think. Lola might have went to Princeton or something. But there was a fight that happened. Six of my teammates ended up getting, I want to say they, some of them left on their own. Some of them had to leave because they were out of the district. So, I mean, for me, I don't, I'm not, I'm not the type of player that looks at my team and says, oh, more minutes for me. If these people leave, I'm, I want to win. All right. And I'm going to work for my minutes. So I'm thinking, like, I might as well go to A.B. Miller with a team that's stacked, right? Because I just don't like the coach. He's just not a good coach. So I ended up staying. My senior year, I'm locked in the whole year. I'm locked into this basketball stuff. And, you know, we had some ups and downs. If if you know, like, my journey, well, I'm not even going to speak. Like, I'm not even going to speak about if you know my journey. In high school, I had a a bad rotator cuff, so my shoulder would pop out of socket sometimes, right? So a few times throughout the year, my shoulder dislocated, and I had to, you know, sit a couple games, right? Some of those games we ended up losing. But nonetheless, I'm locked in, right? I'm locked in. The bigger picture to me is the championship. I'm thinking that we got the best team. Like, A.B. Miller has never beat us, right? And that was the that was the team. We knew that we were going to have to get through A.B. Miller to, to win because they have now recruited two top players, two Division One players, to beat us. And I love the challenge. Like I said, I, I, I invite the challenge. Does everybody invite the challenge? No. If you look today, every kid does not invite the challenge. Every kid does not Step into the light. So the year goes through. We win some games. We lose some games. We probably maybe lost three, four games that season. Um, and, you know, I don't like to lose any games. But that's not a bad season. Say go 27 and 3, that's not a bad season. So 27 and 6. I'm not really sure how many games we lost, but I want to say we lost three to four games. Because we lost a couple at the Ayala tournament, which was a huge tournament back then. So going into... The championship, or not the championship game, but the semifinal game, I believe, we play A.B. Miller, right? So I've already wrote A.B. Miller's ticket, right? I got 
we don't really do no scouting. But I've seen A.B. Miller play all year. So, Coach, you're not going to act like A.B. Miller has not become a better team when I've been watching them all year become a better team. And we know that they have two top players. So why aren't you recruiting? Why aren't you uh, not recruiting? Why aren't you scouting? Anywho, flabbergasted. So I end up going to one of their playoff games probably um, because I know these girls. Some of these people were my best friends at the time. I make my own scouting report. I go home. I type out a scouting report. I print out the scouting report as a player, right? And it's flab- I'm, I, I keep saying this, but I'm flabbergasted because now that I look back and say, dang, you was locked in. You was doing things that others would not be doing, right? So I write a scouting report. I give it to my team at school. Everybody's like, dang, okay. But at this point, we have players that, and I had a great team, but people just weren't locked in because of the coach, right? So what coaches don't realize is you can make or break the team, right? You can kill the chemistry of the team. You can kill the passion of players. And I have that type of coach, all right? So we had some, t- my, my, my two top dogs, right? Lanika and B. Lou, they, like, probably, it is, like, I don't know. Like, sometimes you just be over the season. And that's just how I felt. I don't know if that's true. So we ended up, and then our team, we had a lot of younger girls, all right? So. We ended up playing at Faux High this game, Raggedy Gym. Oh my gosh! But A.B. Miller, I think, were was the the higher seed, so they ended up picking Faux High. Uh, so we play at Faux High. I just remember that game. I think maybe Lanika may have been going through some um, medical issues. I don't know. I I don't I don't want to speak on that because I don't know if that's what it was, but I believe that's what it was. So she just wasn't herself that year. She was a McDonald's All-American candidate. So I just don't know. But, you know, we had a, you know, like a 6'3", 6'4", center, which was, you know, hit or miss some some games. Uh, but everybody on my team was just dogs to me, right? So I take them into the fire, you know, any day. So that game we play. I mean, I ended up guarding everybody on the team, I believe. I mean, I, I may have guarded everybody besides the center on the team that day. I remember guarding Lola on plays. I remember guarding Chloe on plays. I remember guarding Keisha on plays. I remember guarding Bree Hall on plays. I remember guarding, um, it was one more player that they had that was kind of synonymous. Like when we talk about matchups, she was very synonymous, synonymous to me because she was just an athlete, right? She could jump. Uh, she could rebound. Uh, but I think offensively, I probably had maybe offensively and defensively, I may have had a little bit more to give. But she was athletic as heck. But I was guarding everybody that game. I remember being on everybody that game because my team. I don't know if they was gas. I think they might have been gas, right? Because we talk about conditioning, right? So if we're under conditioned, then people are not getting back on defense. People are not rotating properly. First of all. Our coach didn't even have rotation defense, right? We weren't we weren't doing rotation help side, bluff, bluff. I didn't know none of that, right? Secondary defenders, third, you know. I, I didn't know nothing about that until I got to college. So that game, I think I probably had, I probably had a double double that game. We ended up losing that game. I was pissed because I had the scouting report. Everything I said that they were gonna do, they do, they did. They're shooters. They're not down shooters. Chloe's going to pump fake, pump fake, pump fake you to death and get to the rack. If not, she's going to shoot. Keisha's going to shoot. She can shoot deep. Bree Hall's going to shoot. She can shoot deep. Lola's going to mix it up. All right? I had everybody's number. End up losing the game. We end up going out to eat. Well, I went up going out to eat with my family after the game. Keisha was, and, you know, I think maybe a couple other players were at the place that we were at Eden, which was my friend at the time. I, sh- I, sent- I showed them the scouting report. I wish, I really wish I still had the scouting report because that was just phenomenal. And she looked at the scouting report and she laughed. And she was like, <laughs> yeah, everything on here is looks pretty accurate to me. Mind you, we didn't do a 
scouting report or a, a film session on these kids. Uh, so, anyways, that's a long-winded story. Later on, uh, same year, just going into foolishness. My teammate ended up. My teammates ended up going to senior ditch day. I'm all basketball. I'm not going to senior ditch day. We got to stay because we're now we're in state. We got state playoffs. I'm not. I'm going to practice. They ended up going to senior ditch day because our coach never disciplined us. And then he decided he wanted to discipline them state, you know, during a state game. And he didn't start them. So we ended up losing that game. One of the kids keyed his car. So I guess that's why we didn't have a banquet uh, that year. I don't have a letter from either year that I played varsity, which is crazy to me. Didn't have a banquet my senior year. Because you're mad at one player who keys your car, probably. All right. Anywho, didn't get a letter, none of that, right? But that wasn't, those things wasn't important to me. Until now, when I'm like hanging stuff up and I'm like, dang, I could have a letter, Ms. Jack, I could have this, this, and this, but I don't have that, right? And it's always good to be able to look back at your accomplishments. So, you know, I ended up getting an MVP of the school, and it was just, it was nothing to celebrate to me. It was a, you know, I was probably the most popular kid in the school. So at that point, I'm, I'm the most, I'm probably the, I won't say the most popular kid at the school, one of the most popular athletes at the school. And when I say that, I'm not saying that other people weren't popular, because I know people are going to look at this like, oh, I was popular. Like, it's not about that. It's not about that. It's not a popularity contest, right? I used to talk to everybody at the school. It didn't matter what you looked like, if you was part of the Pokemon club, if you was a dude with the trench coat. At the corner where everybody's scared of you, I'm talking to you. I'm talking to everybody. So I ended up getting an MVP. C crazy. Nobody. Am hmm. And I hope the coach gets to see this one day because I don't like you. I can't stand you to this day. And I'm not a kid anymore. So I wish I could say it to your face. Not one person on that team got a scholarship but your daughter. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Daughter who wasn't the best player on the team. Not the best defender. Arguably the best shooter. I give her that. But other than that, what are we talking about? But the McDonald's All-American candidate, the first, you know, league MVPs, first, you know, first league, you know, they don't get nothing. Oh, then we find out that you were tossing away letters. Because back then, it was the letter system. You had to give the coach, send the coach the letter, and then the, the, the coach would, you know, orchestrate the deal, the third party. So you was throwing away letters. And I heard that this is not the only coach that has done that. So if you was one of those coaches that was doing that, you are a foul scumbag. So everybody, you know, Lanika's dad, Bless his heart, was trying to get people scholarships. I ended up getting an offer to Alaska Anchorage, but I couldn't go because I didn't take the SATs or this, whatever, the, the CATs or whatever. Because nobody told us that you had to do these things, right, to get a scholarship. I'm sure people know that now, but it's just like, as a coach, why are you not doing everything that you can do to be a mentor, right? To be just a good person to these kids. And we still have those coaches these days, today, right? Um, but that's probably why they cut out the middleman, right? So now you can hit a kid up on Instagram from what I'm hearing. So... We all, most of us went to JUCO. I think Lanika went to Northridge, but then she ended up going to Mount Sac with me. So I, with me and B. Lou. So in the transition between high school and college, we're doing open gym. Now we get into injuries, right? I've had concussions because, like I said, I'm everywhere. I'm taking charges. I've had concussions. I told you about my rotator cuff. Um, 
so now we go into the transition from college, high school and college, and we're playing open gym. And, you know, something told me this day, I just wasn't feeling it. Sometimes just not feeling it. And when you don't have to play, you don't have to feel it. All right. I just wasn't feeling it this day. Um, and I was playing. Like I said, I'm an athlete, so I'm going for every rebound. And that's I take pleasure in that because I'm like, I'm almost at the rim. Like I was touching. I was touching the orange, right? Not the cylinder, just below the cylinder. I'm touching that, right? And my goal is, and the coach, he was telling me, if you if, if you can dunk, I'll get the newspaper up here and everything, right? This is when I was in high school. Now I'm in college, but the goal never changes. So I'm jumping out the gym. I want y'all to see this athleticism. I'm getting off the ground. So I go for a rebound. A player slides under me. I come down on that player. Just collapse to the ground. All right. They're like, come on, get up, get up. Because I usually just get up, bounce right up. I'm like, I can't get up. They're like, what, what? I can't get up. Like, my knee is, it just gave out. So I ended up going to the, and I heard, and I heard a pop. That was the one time I did hear a pop. So we go to the trainer's room. He's like, I think it's an ACL. I end up going to the hospital, getting the MRI. The doctor's telling me, oh, a few years ago, if you had an ACL tear and an MCL, I tore my ACL, my NCL, my meniscus, right? If you did this, you wouldn't be playing basketball again, All right? Went back to the school, and I could tell, like, I, I had no problem with, you know, I was at Chafee. I had no problem with Chafee. It was just that, one, it was it was just an extension of my last school. The coach, he was so nice, such a nice guy, such a nice guy. And I, I, he doesn't know this, but he was such a nice guy. And I need somebody who was going to get in my ass. All right? I'm that player. These players today, they don't, <laughs> just a little Mickey, right? Little Mickey Mouse. Like, y'all don't want, y'all don't, y'all, y'all don't, y'all don't want that discipline. Y'all don't really want that. Right? You don't really want to be a dog. You want to be skilled. You want to get a bucket. But you don't really want nobody to tell you, hey, you look like bull crap right now what's up with you right now you don't want nobody to hold you accountable me hold me accountable i want to be the best ball player i can be so it was just too cool i couldn't do it and they wasn't really like on my rehab they couldn't just they couldn't wait till i got back on the floor right they see me play they said she's a hoover right they couldn't wait for me to get back on the floor. But they wasn't helping me with my rehab. Like, it should have been. It should have been one, two, three. This is the one, two, three. These are the steps that we're taking, right? Um, so I, I, I had no problem with the coaching staff, but I had to get up out of there. I went to Mount Sat. I seen the atmosphere, the coach. We went to open gym. They used to have an open gym everywhere. Open gym used to be cracking. So we went to Mount Sat, open gym. Um, they was getting it in. It was getting it in. So I went to Mount Sac Open Gym, and like the coaches was out there hooping. Coach Mo was out there hooping. Coach B was B was is Brian out there hooping. The alumni out there hooping, and these girls, you know, back then we talking about major D one bounce back. We talking about Baylor. We talking about USC. We talking about some elite bounce backs, right? It's people who honestly could have went league, you know, and. We talking about Cal. We talking about. I mean, I mean, it's, it's just it's Hoopers in the gym. We talking about Laisha Clarendon, you know, going to to open gym. Just people who I grew up hooping with, just elite Hoopers coming to open gym. I said, this atmosphere is this is this is the atmosphere I want to be in. So my homegirls going up there. She was like, come up there with me. I think B Lou was already there. So I'm like, for sure. So I ended up going to Mount Sac. My first year, Coach Beeman was there. You know, in high school, I played like a, a power forward, all right? So I played a four. I could stretch out, you know? I could shoot. I could slash to the basket. That was my biggest assets, really, that first step, getting to the rack, finishing with the contact. I finished better with contact than without it, to be honest with you, because uh, I'm always expecting contact. And, you know, just my midi. My midi is crazy. And then rebounding. Rebounding the defense. That's my game. That was my game. But when I went to Mount Sac, Coach Beeman said, yo, you're not a forward. You're going to have to expand your game. 
which means you're going to have to be able to dribble the ball better. You're going to have to be able to see the floor better. All right. I'm used to making passes out of the post. So I'm not a bad passer. Let's not get it twisted. I'm just not a good pass. I just wasn't a great passer from a guard position. All right. So that, those were things that I had to work on. I wasn't a great, like my one step, cool. But the counter, didn't really have that. Today, that's why it's important for me when I coach basketball that we do skill work. All right. In high school, we weren't doing a lot of skill work. And stop putting coaches, stop putting players in positions because they're the tallest person on the team. That makes no sense. That's stupid. You're setting them up for failure when they could potentially hide out, right? We say age out, but I'm going to say hide out, right? Which was me. They said, oh, you're going to be six something, six foot something. I end up being 5'10", 5'9 five, five, on a good day. So I'm not going to be a power forward. It's no sense. So Coach Beeman kept it real and said, you're going to have to be a guard. So we're going to have to start working on a lot of guard work. And I had time because I had an ACL injury. And when I went over there, they said, you know, their trainer said, Miss C, she's, the, she's up there with the best of them. And she said, oh, no, 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 no. Look at your muscle mass. You're not, you're not going to be ready to play this season. Respect it. Miss C had me working. Right. What I said, I didn't get from Chafee. So I was at Mount Set, hooping. Uh, ended up taking a red shirt year when I did end up being able to play. Like I said, I'm transitioning from power forward to a, a guard. It's not an easy transition, especially when we're talking about eight months, a year, whatever. Not an easy transition. So end up doing it, though. And I was all right. Mind you, like I said, Edwanda, I didn't learn nothing. Bluff, bluff, midline, um, top shoulder, squeeze, get in the lanes, get in the gaps, run your lanes, right? My high school coach was not saying none of that stuff. So even all the verbiage, I'm learning for the first time, right? Treat dribbling. All right, countering or reading a trap situation. We're not learning. I'm not learning that stuff in at Edwanda. So I struggled a little bit. All right, I probably still was great defensively, great getting my rebounds, all of that. All right, but offensively, I just wasn't a great asset. They knew. Okay, I. You know, I've even been put in for games to get the, the last bucket because they do, okay, she liked that contact. She's not running from that smoke. But it was a struggle. And the, we were in the triangle offense. If anybody knows, the triangle offense is not an easy offense to run unless somebody is literally breaking it down for you. And that's what I learned. I learned so much from Mount Set. But that's the one thing that I have a discrepancy with is because now that I'm older and even I teach the triangle is this is how you can read the triangle. These are other things you can do out of the triangle. Right. If we were put in those situations, that's where training comes. When you constantly put a kid in those situations, we're talking about like NBA. Right. If you constantly put a player in those situations off the screen. Right. The reads off the screen. If you constantly put them in those situations like you're tre you're treating it like it's a training session then they're going to be successful because it's about the reps. It's about being able to react because you've gotten those reps. And that's what I think that we lack, right? I think that there was the communication, lack of the communication. It's just like a lot of, even today, a lot of coaches say you either got it or you don't, but don't realize the don't, the, the don't that they say you don't got is the lack of actually education the the lack of actually teaching all right learning new teaching methods and that's why i think that in order to be successful you have to be able to be a master teacher as well a master motivator a master teacher psychologist etc moving on i end up going Dang, this is gonna be a two-part episode I end up going to, from Alsac, I end up going to Dixie State University, which is now called like Utah Tech University. There, 
Me and my teammate Cray went. And when I said, okay, let me let me backtrack. So it was times when I was at Mount Sac that we would have open gyms and coaches would come to see other players. And that's why I tell players, if there was a college coach in the gym giving out a scholarship, and there's one scholarship to give, you're my friend, you're my friend. This is a job opportunity. I'm going to go for that job opportunity. I've had coaches come into the gym looking at other players and saying, well, what about her? She was Because I go hard. Right. And open gym. You have to understand when it comes to open gym, five on five, do whatever you want to do. I have a natural feel for the game. So I'm cooking. When I say open, gym, I'm talking about locking up, getting buckets, cooking. As a coach, I think it's your responsibility to understand what type of player you have. All right. Because if you look at the type of player that I was and I look at certain players, and I've had we've had certain players, and I'm like, this player can go get a bucket anytime you want them to go get a bucket. But they're put into a system where they're so confined that they don't really understand what their role is. So then that's when you have the conversations. This is what I want you to do. So even when I went to Dixie, we started open gym, right? Everybody's like, yo, and this is before this is like dead period or the period where coaches can't come into the gym. So everybody's telling the coach like, oh, she is a hooper. I'm like cooking everybody, every other gym, right? So then when you put me in structure, one thing about me, and I think it's psychological, I think it's become psychological even today. I'm overpassing. Why? Because I, was, I went to Etiwanda where I didn't have a coach that I felt believed in me. Everybody else on the sidelines did, but I don't feel like you did. Then I went to Mount Sac, where it was like very structured, right? And it's like, okay, your role here is to just be a just a team player, right? But you could be an outstanding player, right? A standout player, but you kind of fall back into the light and, you know, don't be that player. And then nobody's telling you, I need you to be that player. Because you don't really know your role. And that's where communication comes as a coach. All right? To instill ultimate confidence in each and every one, every player, so that each and every player could be the best player that they can be. Instead of just being the coach, right? Who just coaching basketball, X and O's. I think that's when I went to Dixie, so I'm hoping, like I said, then we end the practice. Like I said, I tore my ACL at this point. I, I used to be fast. I got hella ribbons. Um, but now my speed has changed. My athleticism is still not as as good as it was, but it's still I'm it's still there. So my co I'm a I'm more of a pacey player probably anyways. I don't know if I'm besides the first step. I don't know if I've ever been really like, oh she's so fast right up on the floor right. I'm more pace pace, and I think that's the best. The best players are your your pace players. Your first step your your has to be your quickest step. Other than that, I don't, you don't have to be uh, Usain Bolt out there. So I'm wondering like. Why is this coach not playing? Like, and you know, some coaches are one of those people. One, of, some, a lot of coaches are those coaches who, if they build relationships with with, with players, they show favoritism, and they don't think that they're showing favoritism, but they definitely show favoritism. And that's why, for me, it's like I don't, I don't get too close to parents. I don't get too close to players because you're not about to be kissing my butt for playing time. And even if we are tight. You're going to play what you deserve to play. I've had players that I was super cool with. They hardly played any minutes. Because that's not how it works here. So, and I'm sure some parents struggle with that, right? Like I said, my story is so re re uh, relatable with many players, parents, etc. That I think that it's important that I have these conversations before I get I introduced myself before we get into what we get into. So I'm at Dixie. 
it seems like my coach is only playing me when we're playing black kids. Be honest with you. Which brings me to my point about her is that the first day that we met, or not met, the first day that we walked into the gym, me and my Maltech teammate who went to a private school called Windward in, you know, the Los Angeles area. But a good school. Not ghetto. All right. Everybody from L.A. is not ghetto. She are not the hood. Right. So she we walk into the locker room and she's like, what's up, my little Mount Sac hoodlums? Mind you, we're still like in. We're still in employee mind. Right. And not thinking much of it, but now that I'm an adult, why would you call two black kids hoodlums? I haven't lived in the hood for a very long time. And my teammate, I don't think my teammate lives in the hood. I don't know if she's ever lived in the hood. So why would you disrespect us like that as a person? Because I have to look up her, where she's from, from Idaho, from a very small town in Idaho or Iowa, something like that. So now you're already showing me that so you have some racial prejudice, discriminatory um, values, right? Because why would that fly out your mouth? So that was that was that we play like like I said, I played against the black teams, which was the harder teams. Grand Canyon University, BYU, Utah. Um, what other teams? Uh a uh, Cal Baptist. All right. So Cal Poly Pomona all, against all the black, predominantly black teams, the hardest teams, I get the more minutes. But when we play some raggedy, weak teams, I'm not getting no minutes. But we got girls on the team who are scoring zero points, getting busted on defense. They know they're not good. They'll tell you they're not good. I'm not even that good. I don't know why I'm playing more than you. They'll tell you that. But they won't tell the coach that. So when you mad, when you mad and you have a conversation with the coach and you like kind of you're disengaged. So at some point, me and my teammate became disengaged. Like my teammate was getting minutes, but the coach would be on her on her bumper sticker, but she wouldn't be on other players' bumper stickers who'd be kissing her butt. That's how I could tell. Me and my teammate didn't kiss her butt, but everybody else did. And she loved them. And my teammate was very vocal and like had an attitude. But I was one of those people who I just play basketball. I go to the gym. You're not going to play me. Cool. Whatever. I'm going to show you. I'm going to the gym. I'm the only person in the gym. We had an arena. I'm in the gym by myself in this arena two hours after while everybody else is probably with the football players drinking. You're not going to tell me I'm not built for this. You can fool yourself, but you ain't going to fool me. So, you know, and. Again, you got boys, players, coaches, teachers. You should be playing more. This is crazy. I, I worked for the uh, announcers. Like, I was in sports broadcasting. And they, like, when I had great games, they would be on air talking about this kid. Every time she steps on the floor, she goes hard. She should be playing more. And then as an adult, because these are conversations I have with my players, you have to go talk to the coach. You don't have your parents. So in high school, I ain't talking to your parents. You come talk to me about playing time because I have to come talk to my coaches about playing time. It's about you and the coach. All right. So I had those conversations with the coach. You know, always a bull crap reason. And we had like three, four coaches on the coaching staff and they loved me. But they're just assistant coaches. All right. Their role is to assist. And one day she told me, you just you just don't go hard enough. You just don't go hard enough in practice. Like, then she told me, probably during another conversation, who are you better than? I said, roll out the balls, lady. I'll beat everybody. On, the only person, that, there's only one person on this team that's going to probably give me habit. Right? We're going to go back and forth. And that's E. That's what, you, what we would say is your best player on the team. So if I'm top two, why am I bottom? Eleven. <laughs> bottom nine make it make sense to me so that's why I'm coming to your office every week because you're going to get tired of me 
Because I'm not, I'm not letting up off you. I look at this competition. Now, I, I'm a realist. If I know I'm not built for it, I'm not going to even act like I'm built for it. We play BYU. Them girls was in. You could tell them girls was different type of breeds. They was in the weight room doing different. I don't know what they was doing. All right? We need to hit the weights more. All right? My knees is not built for this right now. So, I'm a realist. So then she says, you're not going hard enough in practice. Just not. First of all, I told you, I'm not the fastest player on the team. I'm not going to act like I'm the fastest player on the team. I had an ACL injury. All right? I'm, when you're recovering from an ACL injury, you never stop recovering. So, she's like, she says that. And I'm like, every single coach that I've had, don't matter at what level. So that's how you're not about to play with me about going hard ever. Because anybody that knows me knows that I'm going hard every play. So I start writing my stats down at practice. Lo and behold, assistant coach, I'm going to make sure you get in the game. All of a sudden, now my minutes turn around. Oh, because why? Because now I'm holding you accountable because of, of the lies that you told. Right? And the prejudice that I think that you have against me and my people. And my people who's not kissing your butt, right? Because she also let a player say, coach is not going to recruit, recruit black kids anymore because um, they have bad grades and bad attitudes. Coming from a biracial black kid who said this. And the coach laughed. Not corrected this person, but laughed, right? At that point, I was not talking to nobody on that team besides my Mount Sac teammate. Because I'm not about to play with y'all. Y'all be kissing coaches, but y'all be out here trying to go out and then telling the coach that people was going out. But you was the one that orchestrated the going out. And then talk about attitudes because you be kissing coaches. But anyways, <laughs> some of you basketball players are going to say, yeah, I feel that. But some of you basketball players are not going to be realistic about the parts that you play. I'm, you know. 10 years out the game. So I can look back and say, it was not me. It was not my teammate. My teammate probably could have did some things better, but it still was not her. You call somebody a hoodlum the first day you beat them, you damn straight, they're going to have an attitude. Uh, so anyways, I end up leaving there. And, you know, having another phenomenal open gym season. <laughs> open gym season at Mousset. And a coach in Alabama, you know, he was going to offer me right away. But then he I didn't have I only had one year left, I believe. And my teammate had two. So he ended up taking my teammate. I can understand that. Duh, it's a business, right? It's not personal. Even though I was cooking. When I say I was cooking, baby, I mean, hitting three and everything. And I was never a three point shooter like that. I was cooking that day. So but I knew it was a competition. man. I'm trying to get this spot. So something ha ended up happening. He ended up getting one player who tore ACL, another player who just had a bad attitude he had to cut. So he called me up mid-season said, I want you to come second semester. Second semester comes. I end up going out there and, and playing first game. I mean, I didn't know none of the plays. First game, no cooking. Woo, woo, woo. And, you know, this is an HBCU now, so it's packed in the gym. It ain't nothing. I, we was in Talladega, Alabama. wasn't nobody in the town besides, you know, my people. There wasn't nothing to do in the town besides go to the go to the college, go to the games. So, I mean, first game, I'm, like I said, I'm not the quickest player. And everybody was like, you ain't quick, but you shifty. You got a little, uh, 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 right, come down, uh, in and out, uh, lay me. Right, I was cooking. Oh, give me, and I'm, at this level, because now this is NAIA, and people be like, you kids think that if you don't go Division One, that basketball is over. It's NAIA that's better than some of these Division Ones. Division Twos. And you're probably going to, and you can be an All-American. If you think you like that, go NAIA, get you an All-American. Some of y'all not built for it. So, anyway, at this level, I could play every position now. Now you've molded me to be able to play post, inside, outside. I'll get a little guard on me. Come on now. We're going. And the coaches trusted us. Right? Back in high school, we was running play. Man, 
you guys be looking for the coach every play down. We running coach? Man, back then we'd be like, I got a mismatch. We not running no play. Line it up. So that's what happened. And I can pass good out the post, like I said. So I was cooking. So everybody after the game, like, oh, they was on me. I'm in the newspaper the next day, everything. I was like, coach asked me before the game. He was like, are you nervous? I don't never get nervous to play basketball. I don't. Um, I'm just going out there. It's just a game, literally. Uh, so we're going out there cooking. Um, I was in the newspaper the next day, excited. My coach asked me before the game, are you nervous? Like I said, nope. Third game in. Third, fourth game in. I got a stretch. Boy, I don't have an ACL injury. It's a different type of temperature climate out here. I need to stretch. Before the game, he talking, bumping his gums. Probably 30, we probably 30 minutes into bumping your gums, bro. We get out, we probably got eight to six minutes to warm up. We ain't stretched. I came off an ACL injury a few years ago. I need to stretch. Boy, I said the recovery never ends. All right? So we go out there, and I'm like, you know, first half, you know, I get a couple buckets. It's cold out there. We in Mississippi, cold. Second half comes. He just he just sits me for a long time, right? And I think it's because I didn't know, like, the play is all that great. But, you know, assistant coach is like, like, we, like, last play of the game. Last, like, 6 to 11 seconds of the game. Put me in. Bro, <laughs> of course I'm going to go in. But I've been sitting here getting cold. Puts me in. It's a switch play. Step over the screen because I'm outside. I mean, unless it's the game plan, you're either stepping over the screen, getting under the screen, or switching. You never know. Uh, I step over the screen. We 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 learn how to jam up, get over the screen, uh, and end up t- taking a step. And just I just unlike the first ACL injury where I just collapsed, I just hopped off like it just was like a strenuous pain, and I didn't hear a pop. Didn't know if it was ACL. Ended up being an ACM. We go back to the locker room. And I will never forget this because I now don't rock with you after you said this. He says, I blame you for, for your injury. Telling me, right? Because we don't, we, we switch on screens. And he's like a little short man, short man syndrome. And I hope you see this because I don't really care. I'm going to tell my truth. Um, we switch on all screens. How am I supposed to know that? I just got here. And I'm looking. And the assistant coaches is looking, and they like, but mind you, he, like I said, short man syndrome. I've seen times in the locker room, he's cussing everybody out, oh, like doing all this crazy stuff. That's like a freaking crazy person, right? We've seen all this before. Uh, I'm just like, weirdo. Like, that energy is weird to me. Any coach does all of that, you're just weird to me. I'm sorry. I just look at you like I'm a psychopath and you have some internal issue that you need to work on with your little short self. Um, so I went there. He ended up saying, oh, I'm not bringing you back next year because your injuries, basically. Whatever. It's a business. Go back home. Figure it out. I never be like, oh, I never cry about it. It is what it is. All right? It is what it is. Uh, anyways, so going into coaching, I how much time do I have? I'm only gonna have any time, y'all. Going into coaching, we'll come back. Woo! We'll come back.